عظم الله لك الأجر بمصاب ابنك الحسين صلى الله عليك يا أمير المؤمنين عظم الله لك الأجر بمصاب ابنك الحسين عظم الله لك الأجر يا فاطمة الزهراء بمصاب ابنك الحسين عظم الله لك الأجر يا أبا محمد الحسن بمصاب أخيك أبي عبد الله صلى الله عليك يا صاحب العصر والزمان عظم الله لك الأجر بمصاب أبي عبد الله Respected brothers and sisters, today is the day of calamity, the day of masaib, of Ahli al-Bayt alayhimu salam. Our minds are in Karbala, our thoughts are in Karbala. When we remember Abi Abdullah al Hussein, Salamullahi alayhi, him and few of his companions who are there, today we remember that it is the day when Abi Abdullah al Hussein was left alone. The one who is the grandson of the Holy Prophet, can you imagine that Abi Abdullah? comes to a point to say hal min nasirin yansuruna while the grandfather rasulullah propagate the message of islam there was no anyone to give nusra to abi abdullah today we remember when the women of ahlul bayt were taken as captives and now are known as sabaya it is today we need to renew our allegiance to Abi Abdullah by saying Labbaik ya Hussein Labbaik ya Hussein Labbaik ya Hussein And it is a day like today we need to promise Zahra that Ya Zahra Abadu Allah Ma Nansa Husayna Abadu Allah, Ya Zahra, Ma Nansa Husayna. 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 Alhamdulillah, we are sitting down together. Dear brothers, you are all here. Sisters are there. Children, or adults, elderly, all are together here. But when we remember Imam of our time, Sahib al-Zaman, he's mourning alone. Ya Sahib al-Zaman, may Allah make it easy for you. How do you manage to mourn Abi Abdullah alone? Sallallahu alayka ya Sayyidi wa Mawlai. Now, when we are in this majlis of Aza, we remember that today is not the day of fasting. Dear brothers and sisters, Bani Umayya, after the killing of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, they fabricated a hadith to say that the day of Ashura is the day of fasting. Many people, I'm sure you have been receiving messages yesterday, today, day before yesterday, encouraging people to observe fastings. And many people now are fasting, they think. That is the ibadah they have to do, but they have forgotten Aba Abdullah. 
no any message will come to you to say observe fasting and remember the calamity of Karbala. It is these fabrications which we need to get rid of it by being with Aba Abdullah al Hussein. Unfortunately, towards our communities also, followers of Ahlul Bayt, some fabrications have been made. Like, for example, they say today as the day of Ashura, don't greet one another by saying Assalamu Alaikum. Don't say Salam today. This is a fabrication. No any marja of taqlid has said when you are given salam, don't reply to salam. Salam is salam, we have to reply to salam. And it is today, we need to say we are with you, Aya Aba Abdullah. How can we say salam alayka, assalamu alayka, Ya Aba Abdullah, and then we don't say salam to each and every one of us. We need to remember this day when Jabir bin Abdullah al-Ansari, the companion of Rasulullah, when visited Karbala, when he was there to do ziyara of Aba Abdullah, according to the narrations, Jabir went to the river Al-Qama, he took shower, he changed his cloth, clothing, he applied perfume, and then he went to the ziyara of Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. Islam is nadif. We cannot say that because we mourn Abi Abdullah, we will not observe nadafa. Now I'm going to recite to you, my dear brothers and sisters, maqtal of Imam Hussein alayhi salam in a short form from Sayyid Muhammad Hussein al Muqarram, who has written this to mourn Aba Abdullah, and he says, when Al Abbas was killed, Imam Hussein alayhi salam turned to see none to help him against his foes. He looked and saw how his family members and companions lied slaughtered on the ground. He heard the wailing of the orphans and the cries of children. As loud as he called, he called out. Hal min nasirin yansuruna? Is there anyone who defends the sanctity of the Messenger of Allah? Is there anyone who believes in the unity of Allah and who fears Allah in our regard? Is there anyone who comes to our rescue and who wishes by doing so to please Allah? The women's voices now grew even louder. Women were crying on this day. As they cried, Imam Sajjad alayhi salam stood up. He was leaning on a cane and dragging a sword. He was sick and could hardly move. When Imam Hussein alayhi salam saw him in that condition, he told the lady saying, confine him so that the world may not run out of the progeny of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ali, so they took him back to his bed. Imam Hussein alayhi salam now ordered his dependents to be silent as he bade them farewell. He was wearing a dark silk jubba and a florid turban with two traces let loose on the sides and wrapped himself with the same burda with Rasulullah used to wear. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and his progeny. And was carrying the Prophet's sword. He asked for a thawb garment which nobody wanted and which he put underneath his clothes so that nobody would be interested in it and hence in removing it from his body since he knew that he was going to be killed soon. Can you imagine, dear brothers and sisters, that Imam Abi Abdullah, the grandson of Rasulullah, knew that after his death, people would, will, would come and they would take the clothing from his body, which is pure body. Then he asked for the older trousers, which he also tore, then, then put on so that nobody would take them away from his corpse. Imam Hussein alayhi salam advanced to the enemies, raising his sword, ready to defend family of Rasulullah. 
Abdullah bin Ammar ibn Yaghath said, Never have I seen someone surrounded by a huge number of enemies and whose son is slaughtered. So are his family and companions, and who still maintain his composure, remain rel relentless and stayed courageous more than Hussein. Umar bin Saad shouted to everyone, this is the son of the quarrelsome one. This is the son of the killer of the Arabs. Attack him from all the directions. Imam Hussein alayhi salam managed to get the second chance to bid farewell again to his family. Remember this is when he said al-wada' al to his family. He stood to ask Zainab to be patient and to solace her. His condition could be described in these verses. This is my farewell, my dear one, and we shall meet on the day of judgment at the pool of Kawthar. So bid your tears goodbye and come to greet and enjoy the fruits of your patience forever. And when you do see me lying on the ground, bleeding, bear it and do not be by tears bound. It was then that Umar bin Sa'ad al said to his men, O oh men, who unto you attack him since he is distracted and surrounded by his women? They therefore assailed him with their arrows till the arrows reached his camp and some of them pierced through the clothes of some of the women causing them to be stunned and frightened. Imam Hussein alayhi salam attacked the enemy like an angry lion and anyone who could catch up with him he, stood, he stabbed him and fought against them. As he was receiving the arrows from all directions, bracing them with his chest and neck, he went back to his quarters repeating, saying, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-aliyy al La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-aliyy al there is no might, no power except in Allah the sublime, the great. In such a condition, he asked for some water. Shimri said to him, you shall not have a taste of it till you reach the fire of hell, inna lillah. Shimri could say that to Abi Abdullah and they started attacking him again. Abu al-Hutaf al-Juhfi, Abu al-Hutaf al-Juhfi shot Imam Hussein with an arrow in his forehead which he pulled out causing blood to run on his face imam alayhi salam said oh allah you see in what condition i am with regard to your servants these disobedience one oh allah decrease their number kill them and leave none of them on the face of the earth and do not ever forgive them Having become too feeble to fight, he stood to rest. It was then that a man threw a stone at Abba Abdullah, hitting his forehead and causing his blood to run down his face. Imam took his shirt to wipe his blood from his ear eyes, just as another man shot him with a three prolonged prolonged arrow which pierced his chest and settled in his heart. Imam instantly said, In the name of Allah, through Allah, and on the creed of the messenger of Allah do I die. Bismillah, wa billah, wa ala millati rasulillah. Raising his head to the heavens, he said, Lord, you know what they are killing, a man besides whom there is no other one son of your prophet's daughter. As soon as he, he took the arrow out of his back, blood gushed forth like a drain pipe. He placed his hand on his wound, and once his hand was filled with blood, 
he threw it above saying, what make what has happened to me easy for me? It is being witnessed by Allah. Thus shall I appear when I meet my Lord. And my grandfather, the messenger of Allah, it is then I shall say, O oh, grandfather, so and so killed me. Bleeding soon sapped his strength. As he sat down, Imam alayhi salam on the ground, feeling his head being too heavy, the enemies of Allah waited for a short while, then returned to Imam Hussein alayhi salam, whom they surrounded as he sat on the ground unable to stand. Shimri shouted to his soldiers, What are you standing like that for? What do you respect the man to do since your arrows and spears have wounded him so heavily? Attack him. O oh, sorrow, they charge from every side at him, hitting his sacred shoulders with blows that left him on the ground. Wa musibata. Zara bin Sharik struck him on his left shoulder with a sword, while a man called Hassan shot him with an arrow which penetrated his mouth. Another man struck on his shoulder, Sinan ibn Anas stabbed Imam Abi Abdullah in his collarbone area of the chest, then shot him with an arrow in the neck. Salih ibn Wahab stabbed Imam Abi Abdullah. Allahu Akbar. Then Dhuljana, his soldier, the, the, the horse of Imam Abi Abdullah, Dhuljana, the horse of Imam Abi Abdullah, came to Imam Hussein, circling around him, rubbing his head on his blood. The horse then went to the camp. When the women saw the horse without its rider and its saddle twisted, they went out, beating their cheeks, screaming and wailing, feeling the humiliation after enjoying prestige, going in the direction of place where Imam Abi Abdullah alayhi salam has been. Zainab the wise cried out, Wa Muhammad. Can we repeat that, please? Wa Muhammad. Wa Aliya. Wa Jafar. Wa Hamza. Here is Hussein in the open slain in Karbala. She was near Hussein, alayhi salam, when Umar bin Saad came closer to her, flanked by some of his men. Imam Abi Abdullah was drawing his last breath. She cried out, Zainab Salamullah, Oh Umar, should Abba Abdullah be killed as you look on? She said, Woo unto you, is there any Muslim man among you? None answered her. Then Umar bin Saad shouted to people, Arihu, alight and put him to rest. Shimri was the first one to do so. Shimri went near Abi Abdullah alayhi salam. Shimri started kicking the body of Abba Abdullah and took hold of his holy beard. He started cutting him, cutting his holy neck. He dealt him one time, second time, until twelve times when... <laughs> Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah wa Husayna wa Madhuluma wa Shahida. He dealt him twelve sword strokes. He then severed his holy head. Wa Husayna wa Muhammad wa Aliya. 
wa fatima wa hasana what happened after his shahada ishaq bin huwai la'natullahi alay went near aba abdullah and took his shirt off can you imagine this is now shaheed they took the shirt of aba abdullah al akhnas ibn murthid ibn alkama al hadrami took took away the turban of aba abdullah Al Aswad bin Khalid took his sandals. Jam'a ibn Khalik al Audi and another man from the tribes of Tamimi named Al Aswad bin Hamdala took his sword. Ya Allah, a man by the name Badjal came and he saw Aba Abdullah wearing a ring in his hand. And the ring was covered with the blood. He tries to take the ring away from Aba Abdullah but he couldn't. He took the sword and he cut off the finger of Aba Abdullah. When Imam Hussein alayhi salam was killed and people fell upon his luggage and belongings looting everything they could find in his tents then they set the tents ablaze. people rest to rob the ladies of the messenger of allah the daughters of fatima to zahra tearfully running here and there scarves were snatched rings were pulled out of their earrings were taken out so they were uh, the ankles and it was here ibn saad after the maktal of aba abdullah ordered the heads to be severed from the bodies they were distributed to various tribes that used them as the means to seek favor with ibn ziyad can you imagine mu'minina and mu'minat when sayyida zainab went back to madina sayyida zainab now is entering there is no imam abi abdullah There is no Abu Fadl al-Abbas, there is no Qasim, there is no anyone Ali al-Asghar, Ali al-Akbar. Sayyid Zainab said, O city of our grandfather, O Madina Jaddina, accept us not, for with sigh and griefs we came. We left you surrounded by kith and kin and return with neither son nor man inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un wa sayalamu alladhina zalamu ala muhammadin ayyamun qalabin yanqalibu